present The Castle, a sitcom set in the filth, grime, stink and brutality of the Middle Ages with some nice music. What can I get you for breakfast, milady? I'd love some fruit and a glass of milk, Merlin. Milady Charlotte? Uh, three sausages, two eggs, bacon, fried bread, tomatoes, mushrooms, hash browns and baked beans, please. Coming up. <laughs> Why are you having all that? I'm on a diet. <laughs> I'm about to go on a diet, so I'm eating enough to see me through the diet when I go on it. <laughs> ah, morning, Anne. Charlotte. Good morning, morning John. Hello, Henry. Your shark. Now, have you seen this in the paper, Henry? Apparently, we're looking for an exit strategy in the Holy Land. The Crusades are costing a fortune. If we don't get out soon, I warrant we'll still be fighting out there in 600 years' time. <laughs> now, me and my homies could sort the problem out in, like, straight away and that, innit? Henry, one of the prerequisites of leadership is to be able to communicate orders. You won't get very far with advance my homies and mash up like blah and all that and everything. <laughs> Do your cacha. Huh. Safe. Breakfast, my lord? Yes, what have you got? Well, how about the special? An omelette sculpted into the shape of the castle with two sausages for the towers mm. and a piece of bacon as a drawbridge. How creative. And I've put mushrooms in the likeness of Lady Anne and Charlotte waving at you from the battlements as you ride off in your hash-brown horse <laughs> across a field of sliced tomatoes. But there are times when creativity borders on insanity. Thank you, sire. <laughs> oh, by the way, Anne, you have a suitor coming to see you today. Not another weedy wet night. Apparently he took a liking to you when he saw your picture in Hounds and Castles Monthly. <laughs> it must have made an impression on him. He's come down all the way from London. London? Cool. Ooh, what's his name? Lord Jeremiah Clarkson. <laughs> of Turbo. <laughs> Here's your breakfast, sire. I'll make it float to the table. Sick transit Gloria Mundi on the table. No, no, it's all right. It's thrown out the window. Ah, wrong spell. Well, then. Yes, my lord. You're an idiot. <laughs> Lovely day for a ride, sire. Yes, Duncan. When fighting in the dust and filth of the Levant, I always dreamt of England. The green fields, the sheep and the cows, the... A full English breakfast flying through the air. <laughs> Who's that riding down the lane? Well, he's a nutter going at that speed, riding the new five series turbo piebald, and he looks familiar. Hey, watch where thou goest, maniac! Get out of the road! I'll have thy guts for a fishing line, thou impudent dog! <laughs> oh, you'd laugh, would you? Then laugh at this sunshine! Oh, do Warren. Haven't seen you since the fifth fall. Is that you, Clarkson? Put thy visor up that I may remind myself of your countenance. I see the years have not tempered your visage. It still resembles the top layer of a butcher's bin. <laughs> Put the visor down again. What was it we called you at school? Bobby Bob. <laughs> Do Warren get it? <laughs> I believe we had a nickname for you as well. What was it? Oh, yes, that way-faced, flat-mouthed, malt-worm Clarkson. <laughs> What it lacked in wit, it hath in accuracy. <laughs> what brings you floating round here, like a log in a sewage outfall? I've always fancied a nice pad on the country, where I can ride really fast around the lanes. No point looking round here, it's full up. Does it look full up to me? I own everything you can see, and beyond that is the property of my friend Sir John Woodstock. So put that in your pipe and burn your beard off. Ah, yes, Woodstock. Isn't he the one with the beautiful daughter Anne? Mm. She of the long blonde hair and the pert puppies. Don't waste your time. You've got as much chance with her as a dragonfly has with a dragon. We'll see. Indeed we will see. Yeah, blockhouse to you, bunny bum. With knobs on and dipped in wheat. See you later. Not if I see you first, you knob jockey. <laughs> May I compliment you on the infantility of your insult, sire? Yes, Duncan, you can't beat and eat an eaten education when it comes to insulting your enemy. Grab me a sausage when that plate comes past again, will you? I'm feeling peckish. Sir John. So, what's this new invention you want to show me? It is a new method of navigation, sire. Ah, what's the parrot for? Ah. Well, I've trained the parrot to fly around the whole county and memorise all the roads. I hesitate to ask. For what purpose? Well, if you say a destination to him, he will call out directions and you will never get lost. Really? <laughs> what's his name? Tom Tom, sire. <laughs> and uh, what do you call this new system of navigation by parrot? Tom Tom Parrot Nav. <laughs> Would you like to see how it works? Indeed, I'm intrigued. Tell him where you want to go, sire. Uh, I want to go to uh, Little Windlesham. 
He's just working out the fastest way to get there, Sally. Here he goes. Turn left ahead. Then straight on for three miles. Then turn right. That's uncanny. I know. He can do other voices too, sire. Tom Tom. Ah! Guildford, voice ten. Right then, hello. <laughs> if you want to really pop along to Guildford, then take a right. But wouldn't you rather like to go to the jolly old seaside there? <laughs> Tom Tom, voice fifteen. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Turn right. No, I mean go straight on. I stop, Miss Rubber. <laughs> It's very impressive, Thomas. Is it expensive? Uh, no, sir. Once you've invested in the parrot, it runs on a handful of sesame seeds a day. Oh, I'd better get that. It's the front door. Down the corridor, turn right, first on your left. Brilliant! <laughs> Sir John Woodstock? Indeed. Lord Clarkson of Turbo. In full working order. I hear your daughter is a most beautifully engineered piece of female kit with luxury trim and dual airbags. <laughs> yes, you'd better come in. My daughter and her friend are doing their embroidery. Anne, put down your needle. This is Lord Clarkson. My lord? My lady Anne, news of your beauty doth travel ahead of you, like a really fast German-built five-gear carriage with rear spoilers. Vorsprung Dirk Top Totty. <laughs> Thanks. This is my friend Charlotte. Hi. Cool blue hose. Yeah, they're called wranglers because you have to wrangle yourself into them every morning. <laughs> oh, I love that bulge near the pocket. You must have a truly impressive... Collection of cart keys. Oh, yes. Yes, well, I'll leave you to talk. I've got a council meeting to attend. Oh, well, Lord Clarkson, I doubt I shall see you again. If things go as they normally do with my daughter, you'll be out on your ear within five minutes. Good day, my lord. What did he mean by that? Well, Anne's really picky with suitors, whereas I'm not that fussy. Charlotte? Is that true? Yes, she fancies anything with a pulse and a full copy. <laughs> no, I mean about you, my lady. Well, I do find the conventions and niceties of chivalry terribly dull. I'm with you on that one. Find a woman you like, slap her on the derriere. And if she's up for it, sling her over your horse and take her for a really fast ride. I see. It's all about speed. Can't hang about. So what do you think? Hot to trot? Or not. I admire your directness, kind sir. Yep, that's me. Ten stone of turbocharged directness. Ten stone? That's these hoes. They make me look bigger than I am. <laughs> so, Lady Anne, have you ever been to London? No, my lord. Oh, I'll take you there. It's a huge, massive metropolis of over 300 people. <laughs> The only trouble is, they charge you to enter the city on a horse or in a cart. But I heard they don't charge you if you are riding something with low emissions. What, you mean a horse with really short legs? Who cares? I don't pay anyway. I just ride past them so fast, they don't even see me. But a bing I'm gone. Wow. You saw Clarkson go into Sir John's castle, and he still hasn't come out. I'm afraid not. What's he doing in there? I'll warrant he's putting all his blubbery charm into chatting her up. But she won't fall for him. She can't. But what if she does? What if she forgets about me? No, she won't. She can't. Who was it said, no one can forget Sir William de Warren? I forget. <laughs> oh, love is such a torment, Duncan. It brings both pleasure and pain. It is at once sweet and sour, both soft and hard, both little and large. What a, <laughs> what a wonderful double act they were. <sighs> Have you ever felt the pain of love like this? Only once. Who was she? She was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. <laughs> that much is true. What was she called? Mick. You mean Michaela? No, I don't. If Clarkson goes near Anne, I'll skewer him like a Turkish waiter doth a donna kebab. I wouldn't worry about it. I imagine she's more discriminating. You think so? Well, she's turned you down enough times. I wouldn't bet on it. He could sweet-talk the drawers off a Dominican nun. Really? And that's very tricky. But well worth the effort. <laughs> Meeting to order, please. Oh, Thomas, you haven't brought your sound synthesizing machine with you again, have you? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, the first item of business, a proposal to open a new house of entertainment in the village. Who's the applicant? A Master Stringfellow. <laughs> Call Master Stringfellow. My lord. As we are in the council chamber, I must ask you to remove your ridiculous hat. That's not a hat. That's my hair. <laughs> Good. So, from the proposal before me, you wish to open up a place where one can see what is described as 
pole dancing. Yes, my lord, we have a pole in the middle of the room and maidens dance around it. By maidens, you mean virgins? Well, virgins, that's a technical term, isn't it, sire? I mean, people call themselves carpenters, but that doesn't necessarily mean they can bevel, does it? <laughs> Whereas my girls can bevel your brains out. <laughs> you mean your girls know one end of a vice from the other? In a matter of speaking. <laughs> what would you call the dancers, then? Babes, chicks, lookers, corkers, very much all the same to me, sire, but then I am from Sheffield. <laughs> Any questions from the floor? Jedediah Wayne, that oh. public entertainment's committee, that's outrageous. Ah, shut up, Wainwright. So it's a kind of fertility dance, then, to celebrate the Earth's bounteous beauty? Exactly. The whole club is actually a celebration of the Earth's bounciest beauty. <laughs> Oh, all kinds of costumes, you know. Oh, to symbolise their purity? Oh, yes. Some of them even dress as nuns. Oh, oh, very well. To summarise, Master Stringfellow, this is an establishment featuring female virgins assembling together, dressed in virtuous costumes, to dance around a pole in celebration of fertility. Excellently put, sire, yes. I must write that down. Very well. Uh, those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against nay. Nay! Fast and carriage. Ooh. I quite like that one, though. <laughs> well, my lady, I'll be off. I'm staying at the local hostelry, the Merc Inn. Oh, I work there. Really? In that case, I'm glad the Novotel was full up. Oh, thank God he's gone. He was such a bore. He only stopped talking about himself once, and that was when a fly flew into his mouth. <laughs> That's not fair. He talks about other things, like horses and carts and... Oh, my God. What? Oh, my God, you like him, don't you? Don't be ridiculous. I don't like him. I love him, Charlotte. He has wit and gorgeousness bursting out of him. That's just because his britches are two sizes too small. <laughs> oh, Charlotte, the love I feel for Clarkson is a real thing. Men want to be him, horses want to marry him, and women want to be ridden by him. I may have got the last two mixed up. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> and ladies, peasants and serfs, I'm Billy Magshot. Went to the doctor the other day, he said, I haven't seen you for a while. I said, no, I've been ill. <laughs> well, that's enough satire. Now, continuing our tradition at the Merkin of hosting travelling theatrical experiences, please may I introduce this week's host, Master Jeremy Paxman. Yeah, welcome to the first ever University Challenge. This week's teams are University College Oxford, founded last year, and they're up against Peterhouse College Cambridge, founded last week. <laughs> Both fighting for a place in the second round where they will meet each other, and then for a place in the final where they will meet each other again. <laughs> Rules are simple. There's a chicken tethered to the front of your desks. If you think you know the answer, smack the chicken. Right, fingers on chickens, your start of a ten. In 54 BC, which Roman playwright... Peter Hans Johnson. I don't know. Why did you buzz then? I just wanted to choke the chicken. I don't doubt it. <laughs> ah, Stringfellow. Love the thong. Cheers. Looks good. Chafes a bit. So, when will you have the money for my club? Keep your voice down. I'll be marrying Lady Anne within days. Then I'll plunder her father's estate, and when it's all gone... Divorce? I'll... Quickie divorce? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do the manic laugh, sir. I love the manic laugh. No, it's naff. And if I think it's naff, it's really naff. You're suckling pig, sire, with an orange up its fundament. Oh, Charlotte, how long have you been standing there? Oh, ages. But uh, I couldn't hear anything because this man's hat was in the way. It's not a hat, it's my hair. <laughs> My lord, why don't you just tell Lady Anne what Clarkson's really like? Because she'd just think I was trying to get rid of him so I could marry her. But you are just trying to get rid of him so you can marry her. I know, but the truth mustn't come out. Not coming out is something I'm exceptionally good at, so. <laughs> You could tell Lady Anne about Clarkson without her realising you've told her. What are you on about? My experience at the Vatican taught me a great deal about many things apart from soft furnishings and luxurious silk undergarments. <laughs> like what? Intrigue and deceit. One reason the church is so powerful is that it has mastered the skill of saying one thing and meaning another. 
I'm sorry, Duncan, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> Let me explain. I don't believe you, Charlotte. It, Clarkson only wants you for your father's money. No, he really does love me. Why else would he have bought me this beautiful necklace? It's not a necklace, Anne. It's an air freshener in the shape of a pine tree. <laughs> oh, no, there's to worry and pretend we haven't seen him. Well, Anne, we're in the middle of an empty field. What are we going to do, dive down a rabbit hole? Give it a go. go. Lady Anne, how wonderful to see you. My lord. Hi, Sir William. Uh, let me help you up. Oh, thanks. Not you, Anne. Oh, right. <laughs> hey, cool cod piece. Uh, thanks, Kath Kidston. Hence the spots. Oh. Love the watering can sticking out the top. Oh, actually, that's not... Uh, excuse me a minute, these buttons are so tricky. Lovely day, isn't it? Yeah, it may seem so, ma'am, but I must warn you, there are many dangers in the woods. Thanks for that. I mean that things which may look innocent, like uh, sheep, may be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Hmm? Really? Yes, if, for example, this sheep were to ask you to marry him. But you're not allowed to marry a sheep, are you? Um, apparently you are in Norfolk, my lady. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I would be suspicious of the sheep's motives, and I would say, wait, sheep, are you marrying me because I am young and innocent and my father owns many acres of land? Why would you talk to a sheep? No, 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 he's, he's a wolf, right? Uh, disguised as a sheep. Like he's got a woolly sweater on or something. Yeah, look, stay with me here. I'd, I'd say, um, look, I know your game, you dunghill. Coming round here on your V8 piebald, sniffing round the woman I worship, trying to lay your filthy paws on her and dribble poison into her ear. Have at me, thou dog! I thought you said he was a sheep. No, no, he's a wolf. So where did the dog come from? Oh, maybe it ran away from its owners because they were treating it badly. What? What? It was just an idea. The, 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 the point is, milady, you get the gist. Um, and I shall note your incoherent warnings, my lord, but we must away. Uh, of course. Till later, miladies. How was that, Duncan? Absolutely mingy. <laughs> Clarkson, man. I'm Henry, innit? Yes, you can talk to me, kid, but make it quick. That's a banging ride you got there, man. Me and my homies could, like, pimp it for you and everything and all that and blah. <laughs> it's a one-brake horsepower Ferrari Enzo piebald alloy hoof low rise stallion fanny magnet. <laughs> Why would I want to pimp that? It would be like pimping God. Henry, can you just be somewhere else? Safe. So... Lord Clarkson, as you are wooing my daughter, I thought I'd better find out more about you. Of course. Load up the tank and gun it. What exactly do you do? Well, I'm very involved with carts. What do you do with carts? Well, when a new cart comes out, I hitch it up and drive it really fast. Exceptionally fast and sometimes dangerously fast. I see. That's all you do, is it? Is, is drive things fast? Great, isn't it? Fast. Whoa, look how fast that's going. Speed. Fast. Acceleration. Deceleration. Cornering like this. See that? Of course you didn't. Too fast. Do you do everything fast? Yes, everything. Talk fast, eat fast. Make love? You wouldn't believe how fast I make love. It's over like that. Bish bosh, thanks, love. Call me a cab. Fast. Do you uh, have any other interests, like art? No, no, art's just frilly pants. Paintings don't move. I've seen them. Just stay in the wall, motionless. Nothing fast about art. You know, you are the most stupefyingly dull man I've ever met. Ah, but am I the fastest, most stupefyingly dull man? <laughs> I need your help. We have to stop Anne marrying Clarkson. Well, how do we do that? Well, we have to distract him. Well, how? What is it that makes men lose concentration and go weak at the knees? The new five series cart from Renault? No. <laughs> these. In the weapons of the sexes, these puppies are the shock troops of a girl's arsenal. And the bigger they are, the more powerful. Right. So what's your plan? Well, I'm going to make Clarkson focus on me so he'll forget about marrying Anne. And for that, you need to use your magic to make these bigger. Ah, uh, oh, I'm not sure I can do that, my lady. It's against nature. I mean, what would the world be like if people could go around just enhancing their bodies? No, look, it's the, it's the only way we can stop the wedding. All right. Well, maybe I can conjure up a, an outer casing around them which could be filled with the magic air known as helium. Whatever, just do it. Very well. Duo globus rotundibus inflatare. That's it. Get me bigger. Great. Perfect. Uh, just one thing. What? Can you do the other one as well? With you. <laughs> now that's magic. Right, let's go and put them to work. Oh, uh, sorry, 
Too much gas. It'll pass. Ah, oh, there you are, Lady Anne. Such a beautiful day, looking out across the land from the battlements here. No, it's not. Nothing's moving. Much better if there was a 4 by 4 cart hurtling across the fields, mud splashing up the sides. Ah, yes, perhaps. Anyway, I came up here to ask you something. Really? I've written it in a sort of poem. It doesn't mean I'm turning into a Nancy Pants or anything. Of course not. I'll read it to you. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? No! What's the point of that? For you are nothing like a tree or leaf or field of grass. I'd rather compare thee to something that really goes fast. You've spanner eyes. When they look at me, my nuts tighten. I'd love to ride you from London to Brighton. Because you are a bespoke custom-built lassie. Allow me to check the suspension on your chassis. You're smooth and light and easy to park, and I bet you handle nicely in the dark. Indeed, I'd like to buff up your bodywork and oil your undercarriage, and so do you, Top Bird. I'm offering you my hand in marriage. That was beautiful. What do you say, Anne? Don't make me wait too long. I'm in pole position. Yes, I will marry you. Great! And what a bombshell that was. Henry? Yes, Charlotte. Whoa. <sighs> have you seen Lord Clarkson? I have. Uh... <laughs> What? Has he gone to the Merc Inn? I... Look at the size of those! <laughs> that is some serious boobage, man. Henry! For shizzle, it. <laughs> ah, ah, I hear you have accepted Lord Clarkson's proposal. Yes, Father. Within days, we'll have lost a daughter, but gained a... An idiot. <laughs> yes, but as he'd put it himself, he's taken idiocy to a totally new level where it's almost... Divine. Well, as your father, I just need to ask you if you're sure you're making the right decision. Remember, this is a man you, you're choosing to spend the rest of your life with. Unless he gets killed in the Crusades. Well, yes. Or I'm... taken by the plague, or the pox, or in a duel. Yes, all right. Or but... eaten by a dragon. Right, yes, well, uh, remember, this is the man you are choosing to spend the next six to eight months with. <laughs> I am sure, father. I love him. Then I wish you well, my dear. Good evening, lords and ladies. I'm Billy Mugshot. Hi, Shallow. Not many of those to the hundred weights. <laughs> right, uh, would you like to order, Lord Clarkson? Oh, my lady, Shallow. Whoa, ding dong. <laughs> uh, next question. Identify the biblical passage in which the Messiah uttered his greeting at Hubba, 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 Hubba. <laughs> University College. Whoa! <laughs> Charlotte, you need to go. But I've only just arrived. You brought the whole place to a standstill with those things. Everyone's just staring. They're not ordering any drinks or food. No, or... but I need to talk no, to... sorry, Charlotte. Even I'm distracted. I... <laughs> Please, it's... <laughs> Ow! Ah, Lady Charlotte. <sighs> Good day, Your Grace. You're looking very, uh, disproportionate. Uh, I was just trying to stop the wedding by distracting Lord Clarkson with these. I'm surprised you got them through the door. Uh, but they worked too well and reduced everyone to imbeciles. I fear Lady Anne is determined to continue with the wedding. Sir William hath gone off in a huff and I have been ordered to carry out the ceremony. Oh, well, I did my best. I'm surprised to see that you don't seem to be affected by the size of them. Yes, baffling, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well. See you in church. <laughs> Doesn't Lady Anne look pretty, sire? Yes, her mother looked the same on our wedding day. I can still see her walking down the aisle, smiling across at the estate manager. Vernon, I think these are getting bigger. Well, I'm just trying to find the right spell, my lady. Do you, Lord Clarkson of Turbo, take this top totty to be your lawful wedded bird? <laughs> this isn't really a traditional oath. Just carry on. To have and to snog, to squeeze and to feel up. In sickness, but if it's more than a week, get an au pair in. And in health, till death, or in the event of me fancying someone else, you do part. You bet, matey. And do you, Lady Anne Woodstock, take this total hunk to be your lawful wedded hero, to cook and to clean, to occasionally dress up in various outfits, especially the Benedictine nun with the boots and stockings. <laughs> Till death, you do part. I do. If any man here hath cause to say why these two should not be joined together, let him speak now. Or... Hold your horses, Duncan. <gasps> Mr. Warren. Sour grapes, body bun, just because you lost fair and square. The reason he cannot be married is that he is married already. <gasps> Is this true, my lord? Don't be ridiculous. Come on, let's get on with it. Yes, my lords and ladies, that conniving dog hath already hitched his horse to another cart. He hath captured another squirrel in his trap. 
He hath strayed his scent around yes, another... Yes, all right, dear Warren, we get it. Who's he married to? He is married to... You can come in now. The Stig. <laughs> what is he wearing? Wow, that outfit is like boom shakalaka. The Stig, a mysterious figure who never speaks or removes his helmet. My lord, is this true? Get away from me, Stig. <laughs> Leave him alone. On guard, you dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jedediah Wayne, right? Church Chester Committee. That's outrageous. No sword fighting on church premises unless you have written permission. Come back here, you coward. Oh, he's gone off in the car. I'll never catch that. It's a Renault F1 piebald. Don't worry, sir. He won't be going far. I've programmed Tom Tom with a code word. If you don't give him that, he knows the cart's been stolen. So where's the cart going, Tom? Straight into the river, sire. Don't worry about the horses. I bought ones that swim. <laughs> this carriage handles phenomenally well the all-wooden spoke wheels with steel rim spinning like a mad dervish in a hallucinogenic trance. Wait a minute. This isn't right. Oi, Harrod, where are you taking me? Well, you're on your own now, dear. I'm off. <laughs> Merlin, these things are like two massive haystacks now. What should I do? Publish a calendar. Hold on, Melady. <laughs> Milady, I'm trying. What's happening to Lady Charlotte? Oh, God, she's floating up. Merlin, hurry up. I can't stand heights. Oh, I can see the castle from here. Wow, Charlotte, you look banging. <laughs> Reductio ad absurdum. Stop. Ah! Oh. 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 Sorry, Henry. Did that hurt? That's all right, Charlotte. You can stay there if you like. <laughs> Sir William. Now I realise what you meant about the wolf and the sheep, but it was confusing. Uh, perhaps next time I'll try a more direct metaphor. Yes, like, don't marry him, he's a knob. <laughs> I see my words as stones dropped into the still pool of language, ruffling its surface for a moment. You're doing it again? Sorry, milady. In future, my every word to you will be simple, direct and to the point. Good. Will you marry me? Nope, I haven't the slightest idea what you're on about. <laughs> Charlotte. I like you even better with your real boobage and that and all that. Mm, thanks. Can I hold your hand for shizzle? Only if you stop talking like an idiot. <coughs> Terribly sorry about that. It was just a phase. <laughs> that was The Castle by Kim Fuller, with additional material by Paul Alexander. It starred James Fleet as Sir John Woodstock, Neil Dudgeon as Sir William de Warren, Montserrat Lombard as Lady Anne, Ingrid Oliver as Charlotte, Jonathan Kidd as Duncan and Thomas, Stephen Kimman as Henry, and Lewis MacLeod as Merlin and Clarkson. The music was by Guy Jackson, and the producers were Paul Mayhew Archer and David Tyler. The programme was a positive production for the BBC. We present The Castle, a sitcom set in the filth, grime, stink and brutality of the Middle Ages with some nice music. What can I get you for breakfast, milady? I'd love some fruit and a glass of milk, Merlin. Milady Charlotte? Uh, three sausages, two eggs, bacon, fried bread, tomatoes, mushrooms, hash browns, and baked beans, please. Coming up. Why are you having all that? I'm on a diet. <laughs> ah, I'm about to go on a diet, so I'm eating enough to see me through the diet when I go on it. Ah, morning, Anne. Charlotte. Good morning, morning John. Hello, Henry. You're sharp. Now, have you seen this in the paper, Henry? Apparently, we're looking for an exit strategy in the Holy Land. The Crusades are costing a fortune. If we don't get out soon, I warrant we'll still be fighting out there in 600 years' time. <laughs> now, me and my homies could sort the problem out in, like, straight away and that, innit? Henry, one of the prerequisites of leadership is to be able to communicate orders. You won't get very far with advance my homies and mash up, like blah and all that and everything. Booyah, <laughs> kasha. <laughs> Safe. Breakfast, my lord? Yes, what have you got? Well, how about the special? An omelette sculpted into the shape of the castle with two sausages for the towers mm. and a piece of bacon as a drawbridge. How creative. And I've put mushrooms in the likeness of Lady Anne and Charlotte waving at you from the battlements as you ride off in your hash-brown horse <laughs> across a field of sliced tomatoes. But there are times when creativity borders on insanity. Thank you, sire. <laughs> oh, by the way, Anne, you have a suitor coming to see you today. Not another weedy wet night. Apparently he took a liking to you when he saw your picture in Hounds and Castles Monthly. <laughs> it must have made an impression on him. He's come down all the way from London. London? Cool. Ooh, what's his name? Lord Jeremiah Clarkson. <laughs> of Turbo. <laughs> 
Here's your breakfast, sire. I'll make it float to the table. Sick transit, Gloria Mundi, on the table. No, 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 it's all right. It's thrown out the window. Ah, wrong spell. Well, then. Yes, my lord? You're an idiot. Lovely day for a ride, sire. Yes, Duncan. When fighting in the dust and filth of the Levant, I always dreamt of England. The green fields, the sheep and the cows, the, the full English breakfast flying through the air. <laughs> Who's that riding down the lane? Well, he's a nutter going at that speed, riding the new five series turbo piebald. And he looks familiar. Hey, watch where thou goest, maniac! Get out of the road! I'll have thy guts for a fishing line, thou impudent dog! Oh, 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 oh. oh you'd laugh, would you? Then laugh at this, sunshine! Aha! Uh -huh. Dewarren, haven't seen you since the 